couple slides, a little um, little background on who DataLogic is quick. Um, founded in 1972 in Italy, over 1,200 uh, patents, um, over 500 engineers um, globally, worldwide. Go back one. Can we go back one? Sorry about that. I don't know. Okay. Is this the one you bought? No. Keep going. Next one. All right. Let's just keep going. Here we go. 3,100 employees. Uh, globally around the world and we do have 10 manufacturing facilities we are the number one player in the retail scanner market number one player in industrial scanner market the number one player in retail and handheld scanner market in europe and the number three player in mobile computers worldwide next i said sorry i don't know why i keep skipping forward i don't have uh, it on autumn it's all right keep yeah, keep going we're good yep this one yep keep going Keep going, yep. And then, so what is traceability? So traceability is the ability to, I'm not gonna read this word for word, but the key, the capability is to trace something. So, you know, you give something a unique identifier, you keep track of a given set of type of information. So you're reading that unique identifier uh, on that material, on that um, piece of product. And then you're, you're um, tracking that through like a supply chain and some sort of software. Um, development uh, side of things to be able to, you know, keep track of that components material and final assembly. Keep going. So here's kind of a, uh, uh, a pictogram a little bit of what is traceability, you know, so the ability to track, trace, control, chain of custody. So a product all the way from the supplier to the warehouse, the manufacturer distribution center to the retail store and they'll be able to, you know, forward and backwards track that and that traceability. This next one is a good depiction of kind of the automotive industry and why you need traceability within automotive, you know, from the raw materials, the components, sub assemblies, the assembly all the way to the retail, and then you'll be able to track that all the way back. So when you do have like a recall on like airbags or something like that, you can track that back and be able to know exactly what vehicles and bin got that airbag. Moving on to the next one here, so the, um, Oops, um, slide 11. So the uh, traceability in like the food and beverage industry. So this was a good one that we found to kind of talk about um, what kind of started driving some more uh, track and trace on um, within the produce industry was this, uh, many of you remember the 2018, the remote, uh, romaine lettuce E. coli. A lot of people got sick. There were some big fines. Uh, even after they took all the product off the shelf, just um, people were scared of romaine lettuce. So the sales dropped from 45 to 60%. And then there were some significant fines that came out of this too, just for uh, from the FDA uh, and USDA, uh, anywhere from 4,000 to $1.9 million in fines were, were given out to, um, to some of the farms uh, and some of the practices. So what drove this was the next slide was um, Moving into some of this uh, produce traceability initiative then. So there's a uh, kind of a license plate on that flat when it's coming from the farm to be able to hop well now with um, following some standards like a GS1 or GTIN standards that have been around for a while in the pharmaceutical industry, but helping out with lot number, harvest date, best before in specific grower area. Um, and it's kind of spurred this website you can see at the bottom of this whole produce traceability. So how you do this is through ID and barcode readers. So many of you guys uh, have seen something, you know, uh, on all your products that you're buying at the grocery store with the UPC, but a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of other variations of one and 2D barcodes that you can read with a barcode scanner. So these all have a name, like a code 128, uh, an I-205, code uh, 39, all 1D. And then over the right-hand side of the screen, you have 2D, so a PDF uh, 417, that's on the back of many people's like driver's license, QR codes, ECC 200 and 220 is the most common one that you're gonna see in manufacturing uh, for a 2D, so keep that in mind, and then a maxi code. So we have uh, readers that can read all these types of different, um, and many more than this. This is the, the most common one in 2D barcodes. So how you read these, so you have unattended, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, the fixed readers there, um, 
on the left in the middle handheld readers and then on the right mobile computers. These are all ways that you would be able to read that. So going to the fixed mount readers, yep. So the fixed mount readers, uh, this has actually got an automation. It's gonna circle uh, a couple products here. So the matrix 120, 220, and 300 is kind of our bread and butter, um, butter for reading some of the fixed mount uh, unattended type of things we we're talking about on up then to the uh, matrix 410 to 450 for more in logistics uh, type things. The matrix 120 uh, is of the smallest in class with embedded ethernet. So you can see how small that thing really is. So it's an inch by 1.2 by 1.8, very, very small 1, 1D and 2D um, fixed mount imager. Uh, entry level pricing, there's some uh, Digimark um, codes also available. Uh, it's a different type of barcode. Um, and then some of the best in class as far as IP65 and some of the, um, the degree C. Uh, if you are in the electronics industry and need ESD safe, there's some ESD safe models as well. And then when it does read, uh, we have this green spot uh, patent technology. So when it does do a good read of a barcode, you're gonna get a green spot that's um, projected back on that barcode after it reads it. So these are gonna be typically applications that are kind of coming by in a conveyor, um, uh, packaging, things like that. You're kind of using this matrix 120 uh, to be able to do that track and trace and then be able to read that barcode and send it back to the enterprise layer, um, back to like a PC or PLC or something like that. Keep going. So this is the next brother up, that Matrix 220. A um, little bit uh, uh, better lensing and lighting for different read ranges. And then um, you can see it's got a lot of different illuminator uh, um, types of uh, variations to be able to help you uh, read those barcodes. Um, it's got uh, some embedded connectivity, so Ethernet IP, Profinet, and OPC UA um, to be able to talk to that um, uh, Ethernet layer or um, enterprise level to be able to get these uh, barcodes and this information back out of this device back up for uh, doing that traceability. The next one after this is the uh, Matrix 320. It's kind of, a, it's big brother, kind of um, uh, up to two megapixel uh, imagers in these guys. Um, uh, there's some electric focus models in here and manual focus. So some liquid lens models in here um, to be able to, to uh, do that change of height and um, potential uh, variables of um, barcodes you're trying to read of product coming down the conveyor. Um, swivel connector on a lot of these, so you don't have to try to pick a uh, straight or right angle cables coming off of these. And uh, a lot more actually lighting options uh, in this guy as well um, to be able to get that right lighting and optics to be able to read your barcode. So how you would read some barcodes on the handheld side is uh, something specialty on the left. Um, so something like in the middle there with the um, some Bluetooth. We got a Bluetooth little hand scanner now in the bottom, that yellow guy. Uh, some entry level would be some of the Griffins uh, for reading uh, 1D in the entry level area, uh, both corded and cordless. We kind of got the premium uh, general duty line, which would be the Griffin 4500 in the middle of the screen there, both corded, cordless, and uh, our Star Radio 2.0, and then the rugged high end at the right, um, more for uh, with a drop spec of 6.6 .6 meters and for, you know, out on the factory floor uh, type of applications, or you'll see some of those ones, the black at the top um, at some uh, front end retail and some home improvement stores as well. This is the uh, the general, the, the um, the heavy duty one, uh, this is the power scan line, uh, uh, both corded, cordless and Bluetooth like I talked about. The star radio is 910 megahertz back to the base, uh, Bluetooth models uh, on most of these cordless, they have something called, we have called in patent a three green light. So when you do read and get a good read in a barcode, you're gonna get that green spot that's projected and also the green uh, light on the, uh, on the back of the unit as well. Um, kind of moving forward, um, over 6 million of those products, of those handheld products um, sold uh, worldwide. Um, some of the applications where you would use these for, um, for logistics and for that traceability, these are some examples. So in a warehouse logistics, forklift picking, bin picking, order for fulfillment, shipping and receiving. So these are how you would use some of these to be able to do that traceability. Some good uh, images kind of showing um, some usage of them. Next. In the manufacturing, uh, 
operation stations, job sheets, um, fulfillment. So there's a lot of areas where you'd also use some of these uh, mobile devices um, within the manufacturing area as well. So you can see, you know, some areas that you would use these on the shop floor, like I was talking about, or on the manufacturing floor, and they got a great drop spec in the rugged devices for doing that input, reading that barcode, and getting that, you know, back in for that traceability aspect. Moving on to the mobility products. So the mobility offering from DataLogic, and these all also have a barcode scanner built into the top of them. So you got the Memoir family, which this is the entire Android OS uh, offering. So the Memoir K, 1, 10, 20, and then the ruggedized uh, Scorpio Falcon and the brand new to be released in about a month or two here, the Scorpio X5. So these are all based on Android operating systems, all have barcode readers built into the top of them to be able to read barcodes and be able to do that traceability and have a more of a um, an, an OS and an interface to be able to do something. Um, keep, keep going. This is the Windows OS offering, same thing, Scorpio and Falcon, just running Windows Compact Embedded. And then there's some applications for traceability on where you would use like a Taskbook and a Rhino. So there's some applications where you can actually um, pair some of the power scan stuff to that Rhino computer to be able to do that traceability. So here's some mobile applications, inventory, shipping, receiving, cross docking, last mile, order fulfillment, service calls, field, field application, um, and where you would use uh, some of these mobile devices for that for traceability and re scanning those barcodes and typically be able to enter, you know, some sort of quantity or information from the user uh, holding the device. So who uses traceability? So in the automotive area, the, you got all your tier one, tier two, tier three, and some of you folks on the, the phone today may be in these areas in aerospace, power sports, recreational, you know, reading all these, you know. So if you look at this as a, a mock-up of a Dash automotive, there's hundreds of barcodes on all these products coming from all these tier suppliers going onto this product. So you guys at your plants, you're making these things and the final assembly, they're reading all these barcodes as these components are going in for that, uh, that traceability um, frontwards and backwards. Um, so that's kind of where you would use it in automotive. This happens to be um, paper tags, but we also make readers for direct park marking. So if you're doing some of that or have a need for, for that as well, that DPM is direct park mark. Um, we also do that and can help with that traceability. Here's uh, some other aspects of uh, within automotive, you know, so it's stable, it's fast for, you know, reading those direct part marks. Here's some examples of, you know, things on direct part marks. So laser marking um, type of things or dot peen. We, like I said, we have um, uh, devices that can help read these direct part marks as well. So both handhelds and fixed mount readers um, to be able to help with that traceability. In packaging, uh, so um, for traceability there, so label, print, and check, you know, the primary and secondary uh, packaging for traceability, you know, that product identification, uh, like we kind of talked about um, early on in that, in that case study uh, for the romaine, uh, end of line palletizing, some inner logistics. Um, so you can do something like this image here where you can have multiple readers be able to look at that product coming down 360 to be able to verify that barcode, make sure the right product's going into the right container based on that barcode. Um, and then some simple applications, you know, so print and apply uh, type of applications helping out with that traceability. So the reason why you're doing all this, and this is a good um, pictogram as well, showing that um, serialization, you know, that product, the palette. So you can read that barcode all the way from your product line, from your individual product, you know, into, you know, maybe a pack into the box, onto the palette. And you're, you're wanting to typically read and trace that um, through that whole way, especially for, you know, controlled type uh, items. Um, and that, that's that serialization and part of that traceability. And we're able to help you with products uh, along that whole way from handhelds to fixed mount as you start getting typically to the boxes and to the pallet. So here's a, another example of kind of that print apply um, for uh, for the, like the little 120. Um, uh, 
So print apply packaging traceability, you know, the cold packers, you can see um, that small little compact housing is good for some of these applications where you may be first, you know, putting a label on. So maybe you're inkjetting something on, maybe it's a label like a, um, a print apply type of machine and you're, you wanna verify that label was put on and track that back in and get that information. So here's a couple different examples of where you would use a uh, one of those small little fixed mount barcode readers that we we're talking about to help with that traceability initiative. Moving up then would be inner logistics. So that would be uh, typically, you know, a box in a conveyor. So we're able to help you then with anywhere from one side to six sides. So there's a, 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 um, a image of a potentially a six sided conveyor to be able to read the barcodes on any six sides of a box coming down. So if you uh, know that you're only gonna have labels on one or two sides, you know, we can help with that with fixed mode. If it could be anywhere, uh, we can help out with that as well. So anything from carton reading, you know, reuse totes, automated warehouses, you know, picking, you know, you're, you, um, it's part of that whole traceability to be able to uh, help you track that through your process. This is some of the, uh, the products that we have. So we kind of talked about a lot of the imager base, but we have uh, at DataLogic one of the biggest breadth of products when it comes to reading barcodes. So everything on the, uh, the top of that line, the imager is gonna be an imager ca camera base for reading barcodes. And everything on the bottom side is gonna be a uh, laser base for reading just 1D barcodes, but very fast. So just know that we have a breadth of product and that Crescent could help you with your traceability needs on when it comes to you know, stationary industrial scanners. So if you need to do something that's more than just a barcode, that's potentially where some of our vision products come in and it also fits into that traceability. So if you need to do OCR or OCV, um, that's part of that traceability and it's beyond a barcode and you're looking at like a human readable, that's not a barcode, that's where vision would come in. And we have the next slide, a vision offering um, to be able to help you out with that. So everything from a P series up to the MXE series um, to be able to um, use a vision system with some OCR tools to be able to help you out with that data and information that you would need off that product. So the next slide I believe is a case story uh, of a guitar manufacturer that needed to do just that. So they needed to be able to look at a serial number on the back of these guitars and be able to input that back into their ERP system. So we used one of our P-series cameras to be able to read that OCR and to be able to do that traceability of that product and that serial number. So on the next picture, there's actually a, um, an image of what was coming out of the division system, reading the back of that guitar, looking at that serial number um, to be able to help them with that traceability um, with, a, uh, with a vision system uh, for OCR. So that's, that's how um, kind of vision incorporates into uh, traceability. The next one would be pattern. So maybe it, there's not a, a human readable like OCR or like a barcode that a barcode reader could do. And it's a pattern on a product. We also within our vision products have some pattern matching tools to be able to help you out with that pattern. And um, where, would you, you know, where would you use something like that? The next slide is going to uh, kind of depict on some applications that we've solved with that, where you're you're doing some sorting and looking at uh, vision um, with, with patterns to be able to help sort that out and be able to do that traceability. So you could have um, these come down and you're just kind of picking a couple highlights of that, what that product looks like and to be able to give those coordinates back to be able to do that traceability. So this is uh, showing just some examples of one product on the conveyor, but you could have a mixed product on there and be able to just, you know, pick just those certain products or be able to put a recipe in here and say, I want six of this, six of this, six of that, and be able to do that traceability um, with um, pattern tools within a vision system. So in conclusion, um, the traceability um, market is, uh, is very big. So consumers like you guys are gonna be spending a significant amount of money to be able to do kind of this, uh, traceability um, aspect within your uh, manufacturing plants. So it's estimated that 
Um, the traceability solutions market is going to be like 4.21 billion by 2024. And then that whole produce tra traceability initiative we talked about earlier, you know, they're, they're looking to uh, spend like $14 million. So companies like Data Logic and Crescent Electric, we really want to be able to work with you guys and help you with your traceability needs within your uh, manufacturing plants with our, with our breath of product. That's, that's it from my side. I think Gabby's gonna open it up. I think she's on mute if there's any questions today. I apologize, yes, I'm going to unmute everybody. Um, and if anybody has any questions in the meantime, we can um, put them in the chat feature. Just as a reminder that today's session is um, recorded and I will be sending out the link of the recording after um, we conclude today. Has to be a question out there someplace. Okay, well, I guess if there's no questions, Eric, thank you for taking time to tell us about your product today. We appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, thank everyone, you. for attending. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Have a great day. Stay safe.